Well, good morning and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 93. Uh, today we're going to be uh, building a uh, section of wooden fence. So we've already repaired a fence and we've built some gates. Uh, today we're actually going to build a fence. So I think we'll have some good takeaways here. But we're not going to get anything done. We're not going to have any takeaways unless we do what? Let's get to work. Well, you just saw me uh, digging in my soft ground, uh, putting some uh, gate posts, some line posts in. Here's the uh, kind of the plan. Uh, the section of fence we're building is this 61 feet right here. So I'm going to put a post in every eight feet, and I'm going to leave this five-foot gate gap. Uh, where I'll be later putting a gate in here. Let's go outside and look at the scam. Okay, here's the 61 feet we're going to be uh, filling in here. I already got four four posts up. I'm fixing to put in another one. Now I ran a uh, a string uh, from the the starting line down there all the way down here to make sure it was straight and I'm double checking my measurements on the post. And then the third way to, to check to make sure your posts are all lined up is when you look down that line right there, they, they're they covered down on one another. You don't, uh, you see, if you can see more than that first post, you know they're not covered down. This is where we're uh, continuing the fence from. Well, it used to be a corner. Now it's just gonna be a line post. We're not going to use the, the pre-made panels. We're going to kick it up a notch and build this fence from scratch. Here's the 160, 160 fence pickets. Those are uh, five and a half by uh, three quarters. And they're six feet long. Once we get the uh, framework up for the uh, fence, we'll nail those uh, pickets up. Now for the main attraction, this is a five and a half by five and a half inch, six feet long, um, wet gate post, and I got to figure out how to get it in the ground. Um, this could be fun. That's what I need to do. I'll. Uh, I'll just get it where I can push it straight down. All right, I'll get get the camera over here so you can see the uh, disaster. Okay, my theory is that I'm just gonna push this thing down straight down like that, and my wheelbarrow will will flip over on its side and then I can uh, manhandle it. Well what I did <clears throat> what I did is I dug this hole a little bit deep here uh, because I figure that I'm gonna there's this is gonna be such a slow motion disaster that I'm gonna drag a lot of dirt down in the hole. So let's give it a try and knock off the chatter. Okay, here we go. Now, well, so far, so good. All righty. Okay, I got the concrete here. Let's see how level that thing is.
Well, let me uh, let me go show you why I went to all the trouble of putting this uh, this gate this gate post in. If you're gonna put just a normal human gate up, uh, this isn't a problem. But I put this massively heavy, uh, wide, strong gate in this gap, and I only used a regular line post to attach the gate to. Well, what that does over time is 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 this uh, lightweight post will tend to sag sag in. It doesn't have to sag in very much, and then the gate starts uh, um, sagging. That was a problem we had here. If you recall, we had to put this turnbuckle in, and since I put the turnbuckle in, I haven't had any more problems. And the turnbuckle even seems a little little loose, and I still don't have any problems. Okay, another thing we're not doing is we're not using these prefab uh, fence panels. When I put this fence up, I just bought the pre pre-made uh, fence panels, and you know I you know there's they're what they are, um, but to me they look like the cross bracing right there. You can see it in the camera is sagging, and almost on every single one of them, the uh, the bracing is uh, sagging. Let's uh, go look how I'm going to correct that. Those uh, prefab uh, panels uh, use eight foot, uh, you know, inch and a half by about two inch horizontal braces. Well, I'm going to use these uh, two, these treated two befores, and that should make it uh, a lot stronger. New and improved braces, uh, those nailers look like. Okay, let's uh, finish getting those uh, fence posts in and uh, we can start actually building fence. Well, I got the, uh, I got the fence post in, but now I'm doing a little cleanup. Clean up all these mounds of dirt and uh, I kind of left this uh, grass a little bit long so I can you know use it to help spread the dirt Okay, it's about time to uh, nail up those uh, nailers. I got them all uh, laid up uh, where they're supposed to be. A total of 24 of them. Let's uh, see how that's done. Since I'm doing this part of the fence uh, alone, I've uh, come up with this jig to uh, hold the far end of the, uh, the brace. Uh, to get it started. I haven't tried the, I haven't tried it yet, so let's uh, give it a try. Besides that, it's a good, uh, good excuse to make another jig. Well, that was phase one. Uh, the jig worked fine. Now the critical part, let's see if I can get the jig off without tearing it up. Ha ha! Look at that. We're geniuses. Well, there's the jig uh, without, any, without any wood on it.
Okay, let's try it again. Hey, uh, this isn't news to anybody, but these two befores, when you get them, they're usually uh, between an inch and uh, uh, a quarter of an inch too long, um, which is good in this application because if my measurements are a little bit long, then I have this to play with. But if my measurements are dead on, as these are, uh, then I need to trim about three quarters of an inch off, uh, off the uh, tube force. So I'm going to do that now. I'll tell you the truth, I don't know how I got by without this uh, cordless jigsaw. Well, I got all the uh, fence stringers up, if that's what we're calling them. About time to start uh, putting up some pickets. Okay, how I put these up here uh, on the sample, the distance right here is about averages about four and a quarter inches, and I don't think that's um, wide enough so I uh, I'm, I'm cutting it down to about three and a half so that goes in there like that you leave this gap and then you take your next board and put it over top of it like that Okay, uh, somebody's probably going to mention that, uh, and maybe even ask me why, why I haven't, I didn't put this thing into assault, assault rifle mode. You can th throw a switch right here, and you don't even have to pull the trigger. You just pull the trigger in. and do it that way. I prefer to pull the trigger each time. Seem like I have better control. And that's probably because I, you know, I'm not a framer, I'm not a carpenter. Okay, let me uh, keep working on this and we'll get back when something's Something else exciting happens. Well, this morning, I uh, got up, but instead of uh, knocking off the chatter and getting to work, <coughs> I had to go to Lowe's to buy me some two-inch hot-dipped uh, ring shank nails for my gun because the fact that I was going to use over 2,000 nails to put this fence up uh, totally escaped me. Kind of warming up to the assault rifle mode. Over here I have a pendulum, uh, not a pendulum, a plumb bob um, to give me a reference point. I think I showed you that before. I didn't know if it was going to work, but it seemed to be working good. What I'm doing here is uh, putting the first layer down and then putting the second board up. That's probably a logical way to do it.
primarily because uh, I I got to worry about the spacing and the plumb on that first layer. Well, it's about uh, drum roll time. We got all our pickets in. We wrapped around a little bit that corner, so we actually got about uh, 70 feet of fence instead of uh, 61. Let's look at some of the things we did different. Primary thing we did different, uh, three different things. First of all, this this is the the prefab panels, and this brace right here, this stringer goes across here. This is only two inches. On our version, we put a, a standard size two before in here uh, to increase it to three and a half inches. Another thing, these gaps between the inner pickets are four and a quarter on the prefab and I cut it down to two to two and a half inches on the rest of it on the fence we did today. Now closing those gaps up in in this prefab version there are 20 boards in the prefab edition but on our version we did today uh, there are 24 boards so the thing is heavier. Let's go look at it. Okay, here you can see instead of having the two inch, we went to three and a half inch. This should should make this much stronger, and uh, so where it won't sag. We cut this distance here from four and a quarter. This one here is uh, two and a quarter. Uh, this one's three, two and a half. This one's three. Um, but we significantly reduced these gaps, which now in Increased, increases the board count here from 20 to 24. All right, uh, one final look at our fence. There's our five foot gap. Let's go outside and look at the outside of it. You remember how I was fussing, fussing about making, making this uh, back uh, fence straight and exactly lined up on that, that other fence. I don't know if you can see it here. Very important. It's like not matching up the eaves on a house or something when you add a, some pitch to it. So I think our fussing back here uh, paid off because that fence looks pretty straight to me. Well, I guess that'll do it for another uh, Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 93, building 70 feet of uh, a wooden fence. I think we got some good takeaways uh, out of it. We looked at some of the advantages and disadvantages of building your own fence as opposed to buying the panels. Um, they're a lot easier to carry uh, when you build the fence yourself because those panels, they're normally stored outside and they're very wet and heavy. Uh, it takes at least two guys to carry one, so if you're working alone, it's uh, pretty hard. Um, can't think of anything else. Oh, we got to use our hatchet, but I didn't show it, and now I think my hatchet's mad at me because I didn't show it. But he's going to have to get over it. All right, so uh, thanks for playing along, and uh, make sure you comment and like and tweet and Facebook and uh, all that stuff you do on the internet. And I guess that's it. Nope. One more thing. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.